Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Campus Consortium's exclusive Financial Aid Help Desk and AI for Enrollment Help Desk Grant Briefing Webinar. In today's presentation, we will shed light on what the two grants offer and how to make your application stronger to win the grant award. Over to Campus Consortium. Colleagues, good afternoon. It's uh, about uh, 2 o'clock on the East Coast, uh, 1 o'clock here in Chicago. Uh, we'd like to welcome uh, quite a few institutions, almost 50. Uh, it seems that uh, AI or AI in the context of enrollment and financial aid uh, is a hot topic. Um, Oral Roberts University, um, uh, Piedmont uh, Community College, uh, Lake Tahoe Community College, uh, George Mason, um, and, and many others that uh, are participating in today's uh, session from what looks like throughout uh, North America. Um, uh, as uh, Sharon uh, has uh, just alluded to, uh, we're going to be um, uh, trying to convey uh, the, the context of the grant and um, how you may go about uh, more effectively submitting an application um, for either um, AI in support of financial aid or AI in support of admissions or both. Um, these grants are supported by our sponsors and our uh, worldwide membership. Uh, so we appreciate um, the engagement. You don't have to be uh, a member to uh, apply for and receive a grant. Um, and I'm going to have the administrative team uh, uh, move to the next uh, slide. Um, the, uh, for those that are unfamiliar with the Campus Consortium, uh, it is a nonprofit organization uh, that was established in 2003 when a bunch of universities, uh, including Montana, Oklahoma, um, RIT, um, Washington State, came together and said, hey, you know, we've got to put an organization together um, as a shared service model that uh, enables us to deliver um, IT uh, and education more cost effectively uh, so we can uh, avoid reinventing the wheel. And if there's cool new solutions, in this case, uh, AI, uh, we can uh, leverage these uh, innovations, um, again, instead of everyone trying to figure out you know, what the difference is between Dialogflow and RASA um, and how that's going to work within the context of our, um, of our institutions. Um, so generally speaking, since 2003, the consortium has expanded uh, into many countries that have thousands of institutions well outside of the United States, including Singapore, Australia, England, uh, UAE, India, India, and others. Um, that have similar uh, challenges in terms of um, the increasing uh, cost of, of um, uh, running and delivering technology in support of education. Um, previously, uh, you were looking at a slide, and you know, we're not going to spend time on that slide, um, but there are different grant programs. Um, these are institutions that have received grants uh, previously. Um, you know, and, and we tend to make them available based on what our member institutions uh, want uh, in terms of, you know, want enabled, and then we deprecate grants that, you know, no longer uh, make sense. Um, so there's, you know, quite a, a, a series of, of hot topics that um, you may be interested in uh, beyond uh, these particular um, uh, grant programs. And there are a couple that are related. Uh, we do have a, a financial aid help desk grant and a uh, enrollment help desk grant that you might be interested in if you're interested in, you know, some of these um, uh, uh, kind of AI elements. And if you're on the technical side, there's also AI for the IT help desk um, and support of the IT help desk, for example, in after hours and weekend scenarios. So kind of related uh, items that uh, could be of interest. Um, uh, and, and typically, 
the point of um, highlighting this is we, we would like to suggest uh, where it makes sense, you know, where it's not a new grant. Now, AI is more of a new grant, a new technology. It hasn't been running uh, for many years. Uh, but for, for other uh, grants that you may want to consider applying for, it's always good to get a letter of support from an existing grant recipient um, in the past. And, and, and that kind of tells us that, you know, you kind of know what, uh, what you're getting into, um, you know, walking in with your eyes more open, um, uh, which would enable the project to be, as a percentage, uh, more successful. Um, uh, and, and, and the institution can then light, write a letter of recommendation and they can serve as a, a, a good mentor um, not just during the application process, but really uh, during um, the the project uh, uh, itself. Um, so, so again, uh, this slide and 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 uh, you know the next kind of just give you a sense of uh, you know different types of institutions. So you don't have to be uh, you know uh, we, we don't really differentiate. So it's not like hey we wouldn't give a grant uh, to to schools with you know massive endowments. Um, or, or we're only looking for schools who are, you know, who are, um, you know, running deficits. Uh, you know, that's that's not really the case. It's it's more, you know, it, 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 you know, is this clearly something that w would add value? Uh, just to give you an example, you know, um, a, a lot of reasons why, um, uh, you know, folks are interested in uh, these um, these particular grants is because there's a lot of load or, um, you know, kind of repetitive tasks. That are coming into the financial aid and, and enrollment teams, um, and and there's not enough staff, right? So can can AI help to handle some of these repetitive inquiries um, so that the limited staff, you know, do more with less thing can handle um, elements that are more complex in nature um, instead of things that can be automated, right? Or automation. Um, uh, you know, to reduce the, the, the workload on the existing team. So, for example, for financial aid, for those of you that are handling, handling like FAFSA eligibility and process, um, application, you know, completion queries, um, you know, financial aid availability, um, uh, you know, these types of things, you know, can, can these be, again, um, triaged with AI uh, on chat and or AI on uh, other interfaces, uh, other channels like uh, voice, right? Can we get to AI from Siri or Google Assistant? And then in admissions, uh, again, some of the repetitive elements that may come up in essentially what is tier one are, um, you know, exploring program degree and certificate uh, options, um, you know, deadlines and important date, dates, um, you know, just I was a general uh, perspective and, and returning student uh, um, kind of questions and sometimes connecting institutions with, you know, the appropriate offices or with advisors, you know, things of this sort. So um, the, um, you know, the, the intent really uh, of, of the uh, of the AI is not really just AI for the sake of AI. Um, it, it's really to to help, um, you know, address some of these uh, common um, questions uh, that are already coming in, um, you know, via again, uh, uh, mostly phone calls, uh, but uh, you know, chatbot tech is also uh, kind of one of the, the the channels, and it's tricky, right? Because um, AI, like, do we really want a machine uh, handling, you know, kind of the the questions and answers? Um, is is always, you know. Um, you know, and, and, and what does a machine do or what does a robot do when it can't handle something or is not trained on something? Can it take it to my, my you know, financial aid or enrollment team, um, you know, uh, automatically, right? So, you know, it can be triaged by, uh, you know, a, a, a non-robot. Um, so these are, you know, items that are a little bit, um, uh, you know, trickier on voice. Um, uh, and, and they're also... Um, you know, they're also um, in the inverse easier on chat because you know you can sort of get away with more on chat versus you really got to have the right robot on voice. Uh, you know, to to not make it feel uh, you know like a crappy experience. So it's all about the user experience. And what I've seen 
uh, of late that's a really great user experience is, you know, I can just, you know, I can just kick up um, the California Community College system or I can kick up um, New Mexico State University from theory um, and I'm not even going to a website or an app or anything. I'm just literally going to my phone and, and using Google Assistant uh, or Siri um, and adding a skill to that experience. So I, I really love that uh, because it makes it more accessible and ubiquitous. Uh, and then technologically as an organization, obviously we're kind of a, you know, on the per on perch kind of looking at things that are moving and we're not always that excited about kind of purely startups and, and early stage tech because when we look at higher ed, we think in quarter centuries, right? Whereas super early stage companies, they think in quarters are just staying alive. Um, there's a huge amount of investments that, um, uh, that uh, Amazon, as you know, and Google are making in this space um, and really m contextualizing it uh, for what we need in higher ed with the data sets that we have you know, it, it is really ideal, right? In terms of, we're not trying to reinvent core technology here. Really, just enable it to be, um, you know, effective and 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 with a great experience uh, in the higher ed space. So, so our process is also to make sure that we're enabling the right partners and technologies uh, in this particular uh, grant. And you know, Sharon's going to kick up a, a really short, um, a short uh, chat. Uh, from uh, from California Community College system um, that that you know it, 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 uh, you'll see kind of a, a chat environment that they typically um, you know are, are 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 utilizing so they have their own uh, ticketing system and um, that ticketing system um, and and interaction system happens to be nice in contact um, so she's going to punch in some kind of preset um, questions that she's got um, on a notepad just so we, you know, kind of don't have to type everything out. Uh, but you get a sense of, you know, behind the scenes, there's um, essentially, uh, in this case, uh, a robot that is um, going to the questions that has been trained on the questions and answers them. Uh, now, typically what's happening behind the scenes is, you know, there's complex stripping of the questions down to intent. Um, and, and then the response based on what the bot has been trained on uh, to handle. So uh, again, each institution um, needs to be set up, configured, um, trained, uh, and usually the training is against the the knowledge base um, and 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 any historical data which may not exist, but uh, ideally historical data, but really ultimately the existing knowledge base or FAQs. Um, that then get the quality scores uh, up from, you know, what might initially start at 40% up to something more awesome like 80% uh, and beyond. And with, um, uh, with CCC Online, uh, sorry, this is not California uh, Community College System, it's Colorado Community College System. Um, they started with a 40% score um, and they moved that needle up to 80 uh, plus percent. That means the machine, the bot is able to handle uh, more than 80% of the questions coming in and uh, answer them correctly and not have to defer them to uh, a tier more sophisticated person and a live, um, you know, uh, admissions officer or um, a financial aid administrator, which is really awesome, right? In terms of uh, the, the tier of issues that, um, uh, that uh, automation is able to handle. If you think about it generally, if we did the numbers correctly, a, a human handling something might be, you know, 14, 12, 25 dollars, depending on how you, you calculate it. And uh, generally, we're not saying technology makes it free, uh, by, you know, but it, it makes it closer to zero. I would say just as an example for human work 25, we might get a machine to be able to handle a tier of questions at five or two or three because uh, technology, again, is, is expensive, right, to run, maintain upgrade and manage and all that kind of thing. And then the details of how you want to skin the cat, right? Uh, do you want to test chat uh, so you're not, you know, sticking your fingers into voice right away? You know, how do you baby step this in? These are things that might differ from institution to institution. Um, but generally, we have selected uh, running uh, AI on multi uh, platforms. So we're running this suggested grant uh, technology platform on uh, uh, on Google, 
uh, on, on Amazon, uh, Lex, and also on Rasa, uh, because each one does things better and worse than the other. Um, so, so that's important uh, in terms of what's powering uh, kind of the direction that we took on this particular uh, grant after spending, you know, a year or two uh, in the process of looking at emerging technology. Um, uh, and then as we, we go forward, so obviously, you know, the, the types of things that, that would be handled in, in, in admissions or recruiting um, or enrollment uh, would, be, would be different uh, than kind of things coming in uh, on the financial aid side. So we've separated, um, you know, uh, items for enrollment and FA, and we tend to see also a lot of seasonal demand uh, uh, in, in areas, obviously, like FA. Um, so sometimes this can also be useful to address some of the, uh, th those high, high peak uh, kind of uh, seasons. The other grants that we have that are, that are not the AI ones actually provide uh, supplemental people, uh, like a call center uh, kind of grant, um, you know, for, for uh, gaps in, in, in staffing levels. Uh, so the two could be used actually in conjunction or, or it, you know, the, the AI could be, you know, sufficient uh, for, for bringing those high volume times down to be more manageable. Um, uh, uh, Sharon, if you can continue um, uh, to the next slide, that will be uh, helpful. So uh, the, the grant is, is, is really about um, software. It's about uh, meaning licensing. It's about um, uh, hosting. It's about support and maintenance. It's about professional services for implementation, right? That's the, the scope of the grant over a multi-year period because you don't want to get a grant and then all of a sudden like it's $200,000 in year two and it's unsustainable, uh, although it might have worked really well in year one. So uh, the, 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 um, the, the scope of the grant covers these uh, areas uh, of what is required to, to get the service, you know, implemented I I successfully, right? Um, and, and, and for the, the bot to be trained to actually add value um, in, in the real world, in your real world. So uh, that's the, 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 the coverage in terms of, uh, you know, what the grant is entire, in, in, intended to cover. And then based on, uh, you know, our, our grant budget and the applicant pool, we then award a series of grants, either full uh, in terms of we're covering the entire cost or we're covering a partial cost uh, and you have a, you know, a, a matching funds fee. Uh, we try to spread the money out um, you know, to, to as many institutions as it makes sense. But more importantly, as you'll see from the application questions, we're more interested in projects that succeed because if we spend you know, $20 or $30 and all the projects fail, that means our ROI on the grant expenditures is zero. But if you know we're able to have successful implementations, that means that money has gone a long way uh, and has achieved an outcome. And that's really what we're after uh, are really the outcomes. Um, uh, and you will also see different uh, I seminars where people who've successfully received a grant and done something uh, uh, as an outcome are presenting their lessons learned um, in other campus consortium webinars. So um, it, uh, we'll go forward. Um, uh, uh, the other part is uh, generally we're pretty um, strict on the way we do the timelines um, uh, on the grant itself. But, uh, you know, if you plus or minus a day or here and there, you know, we're not uh, trying to, you know, higher ed already is limited. Not everybody's got grant writers. So we tend to be pretty flexible and the grant uh, coordination team can assist with, you know, if you have questions about the application or how best to answer a question. Um, um, so, so, you know, I would coordinate with Sharon's team to either get you in touch with somebody who's received a grant in the past or, you know, for questions that you might have. Um, so the, the, um, uh, the project phases, like when, when and if you're, you're selected, um, you know, we, we need to do standard, you know, project stuff like getting, you know, kind of information and, and things properly set up. And these things will vary plus or minus. Timelines uh, are not hard and fast. They need to be flexible and coordinated with the grant recipient, but, but there tend to be phases of, you know, things getting implemented and it's not a one day job, right? Because 
training the the bot takes time to get the quality to the point where you know it makes sense uh typically from 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 kickoff of a project to a go live it could be 30 days um you know in, in terms of you know uh, uh execution um but you know i i would generally plan for uh you know 90 days um uh you know as a as a kind of project time frame uh from a from a you know uh, out to prospective student or student experience um so that there's enough time to build on the quality of the um you know of the uh natural language processing and of the data set uh to get the best uh, possible result because again if only 40% of the items are being triaged effectively then you know is the bot really adding enough value uh versus kind of wasting time uh unnecessarily right so we really want to try to get that bot up to 60 70 80 percent plus uh like we took the colorado um uh, uh bot as an example uh so you know keep in mind for your project team some of the things that they would need to be ready with is you know where are we going to go for for information uh which is typically either sitting in the heads of people or is written down somewhere or ideally is in some sort of knowledge base that we can utilize to be able to, to build the training sets. Now, one of the good things is we're able to leverage training sets from other institutions that are doing this, so we don't have to reinvent all the wheels. However, your way of answering things to your context of programs or whatever is gonna be different, so we don't really exactly wanna use somebody else's knowledge set um, you know, on, on, you know, on, on um, uh, defining your handling of certain uh, questions and answers um, so uh, the, the reusability is reasonable on the syntax, uh, but on the actual, you know, what the responses are, they're going to be deeply contextual, right? Uh, so again, uh, that's what your team is primarily going to need to prepare. The other things that are important are, you know, wh where is this going to be introduced? It's going to be introduced in, in, in what channel, you know, chat voice, what, what website, uh, for example, is, is it going to come out on? Uh, you know, that user experience set of questions, uh, it, it, you know, you, you already have a chat, for example, can it interface into that are all important user experience, kind of where this thing lives questions that need to be planned and coordinated at times uh, with your uh, IT team, because sometimes it's just going to be, oh, we're going to deploy a chat and a website, really easy, drop the, uh, you know, drop the uh, service into the website, somebody does some technical HTML stuff and okay, good, it's available. Um, other times will be more complex. Um, so these things of channel uh, deployment planning um, and and the data uh, uh, kind of knowledge are are really what drive uh, you know uh, success. And then ultimately testing, right? Once it's up, uh, you know we're going to need your team to make sure that the outcomes of of, of what you're throwing at it. Uh, make sense and the exception handling like when it can't handle something is more graceful like hey I haven't been trained on that yet, uh, but I'm gonna uh, you know I'm gonna give you a number to call I'm gonna transfer you to um, you know one of our help desk or one of our admissions officers right like that graceful fallback uh, Needs to you know that overall UAT user acceptance testing needs to be solid um, if we can continue uh, Sharon, I think that would be great Uh, we can move the slides if, if you guys uh, can do that. Um, so, so similarly, um, again, uh, I'm not going to go into this one as as extensively uh, because it's going to follow the same pattern uh, as as the enrollment uh, side of the house. Um, uh, you know, uh, it, and and usually we we might even combine it because enrollment and financial aid um, kind of go hand in hand. But uh, there are also questions that come in on financial aid that are not necessarily always related to uh, the enrollment side of the house um, uh, that come in from students. So uh, again, um, you'll see a lot of the same, uh, you know, these tend to be some of the use cases around, you know, financial aid availability and important deadlines and, you know, kind of, you know, financial aid status, you know, things of this sort. Um, uh, uh, and so, so, the, so the nature of the content uh, may differ, uh, but Sharon, if you go to the next slide, you'll see that the processes, uh, the coverage, the processes tend to be 
the same, right? It's the same type of scope uh, on the grant. It's the same type of uh, uh, set of steps uh, on the implementation uh, in terms of, um, you know, uh, timelines and phases and issues um, that uh, need to be considered. Um, Sharon, you'll go one step forward to the uh, kind of project timelines. Again, you know, similar types of stuff that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, will need to be uh, coordinated. So I'll always think about, you know, you know, what do you need in, in, in phase one versus phase two? You could always do chat, role, voice. Um, you know, these are great pilots also. It's almost hard to not be in the AI game uh, now. It was sort of hype cycle last year. It's going to be really important uh, to do well this year. Um, and a lot of people last year kind of rolled it out as a pilot or to be cool or to kind of say we've got AI. But I think people are getting a lot more serious now about, you know, how is it really going to work with our telephone system? How is it going to really, you know, hand off the call properly to our people? How is it really going to, um, you know, work uh, on, on our current chat environment? So the game now is, you know, how is it more practically value add and realistic instead of just a cool press release that says we have AI, but it's not really working, um, you know, in, in coordination with the current way that business is being uh, run and handled. Uh, in other words, the, the impact is, 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 you know, actually adding more workload to manage a separate uh, chat engine instead of, uh, or AI engine instead of, um, you know, it, it, it decreasing the complexity, uh, cost and workload. So that's a little bit of what we see in the 2019, 2020 timeframe, uh, and then deployment of the use cases or the, the areas, uh, you know, to be in alignment with different parts of, you know, ranging from enrollment to student success to IT, uh, instead of, you know, doing AI in three different ways with three different technologies. And then lastly, you know, if Amazon's throwing 10,000 employees at Alexa and Lex, you know, does it really make sense to, you know, use one of, one of the startup vendors uh, who are essentially almost making a run at uh, Amazon or, or, or Google dialogue flow? Probably not the smartest, um, you know, uh, again, you know, uh, venture funded, you know, cash flow negative um, kinds of uh, uh, operations. So, um, you know, so I think that this is a little bit of what's in the mix, but those are extremely technical in terms of our diligence on the tech and uh you know the 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 python and um uh you know and uh machine learning uh, uh libraries and context uh, you know i think we can do an offline technical bit um it is about advanced technology and you know the 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 way the way to do it with authentication and with the appropriate technology frameworks uh for sustainability is is extremely important um uh because it has to be sustainable over you know over a, a good duration and continuously be updated as um, Amazon and Google update their technologies continuously. Uh, Sharon, if we can continue, um, I think this will be uh, kind of uh, ho hopefully helpful to to a lot of, a lot of people. Um, the, the the grant process, um, it, many of you are, are here for that. Um, uh, it, you know, it, it's very important to to uh, again um, uh, understand the application. Uh, it, it's intent is, is not supposed to be very um, labor intensive. Uh, it, it's important to, you know, not just, uh, we're trying to filter out people who just apply for every grant that they see on the internet and have no real interest because there's someone else who really, you know, where this is almost a, a must have instead of a nice to have. Um, and, and we're looking for those folks that kind of, you know, that kind of are walking in understanding, you know, uh, what, what, what um, you know, value this may create or uh, wanted to do AI, but really don't have the capital or operational budgeting uh, to make it happen, right? So uh, kind of uh, institutions that are committed to, to winning uh, is, is, you know, what we're trying to really uh, read between the lines on uh, and the support obviously coming top down versus it being a, you know, kind of side skunk works project that never sees the light of day. Um, the, the letter of recommendation is not a requirement. It's not going to be negative if, if you don't, you know, have one. It, it helps um, to, to definitely have one. It doesn't have to be an AI grant recipient, as I said before. It could be just someone who's received a grant uh, would be sufficient as well. 
uh, and it doesn't have to be coming from the president of another institution. It can come from the CIO uh, or, or someone that you know the 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 the, um, the, the grant coordination team can connect you with because you may not uh, know who to reach out to or or uh, be able to do so uh, 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 timely. Um, the the, the uh, one of these grants is expiring on the 31st of January, uh, so just right here, right around the corner. Uh, we uh, 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 we may extend it, like Educause has just done with their uh, with their uh, application deadline till the fourth. Uh, we have a lot of people, especially in the Midwest, that are been out of commission for a day or two, um, and everybody typically gets these in like last minute. So if you need a, a, a few extra days or so, uh, let Sharon and the team know, um, and we'll look to get an approval upstream uh, from the grant committee itself. Um, uh, um, the other part, I think, what, what um, uh, is important is we tend to move relatively quickly. So for those that were able to get their applications in on time, uh, we're able to review them pretty quickly. And the way it works is um, the grant committee, uh, uh, likely for, for candidates where there's a level of seriousness, will want to set up a call uh, to review the application uh, 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 questions that they may have um, on 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 uh, your application itself, meaning questions are related to scope or questions related to uh, you know again the application form uh, itself. So that that's really a step that you can anticipate in in short order. And then you know we try to keep this thing moving. Uh, so um, uh, typically within a within a few weeks um, uh, you have uh, uh, kind of uh, um, the uh, uh, you know, uh, the award notifications. Um, uh, uh, sorry, w w within a few months you have award notifications, uh, and you have um, uh, then project execution that starts as as, as early as April, for example. Um, so these are uh, again these are different uh, uh, applications and, and timelines. That the one you saw earlier was more uh, immediate. Um, uh, 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 this one is a little bit further out, uh, so you'll see again uh, uh, the January 31st as a deadline, and you'll see uh, February 7th as a deadline um, for the uh, enrollment and the financial aid uh, uh, grants. And then again, the timelines from there on the review and the awards, um, you know, follow uh, in that you know sort of you know two week, four week uh, window with kickoffs. Um, so again, the, these tend to flex. Um, uh, in, in terms of after the step of um, the grant award uh, execution agreement, they, the, the kickoff and the project timelines tend to be um, worked on mutually uh, with the uh, awarded institution. And then finally, um, uh, uh, you know, for us, uh, you know, the, the execution is transparent. So you're welcome to have us uh, uh, transparently oversee the execution. Um, uh, uh, of the engagement, we also, um, you, you know, uh, are happy to push you to our technology partner uh, to, for a direct engagement. It, it doesn't matter to us, you know, whichever way is is easier or or makes more sense uh, from an from an accountability standpoint. Some people like to work with us. Some people like not to have us in the middle uh, from an execution of the project uh, perspective. So that's kind of a a, a nuance. Um, um, uh, optionally, and you know, we don't have a recommendation one way or the other. Like, for example, if we had a, a cloud grant, uh, if you wanted to work, you know, through us, or you wanted to work directly with, you know, uh, uh, Microsoft or, or uh, uh, AWS, you know, you're welcome to do it uh, in whatever way is most efficient or convenient, um, uh, or less risky or, or easier to manage, uh, you, you know, for your uh, for your team. So. Um, uh, here again, uh, uh, try to keep the, the application deadlines uh, in, in mind, and, and also again, don't feel like you're, you know, you're 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 out there trying to figure everything out. Um, just uh, you know, co coordinate with our team for questions or things if you're not sure what what we're looking for in a particular uh, area of the application. Um, Sharon, if you can move uh, forward from this, um, we're, we're going to um, just pause here. Um, and um, uh, see if there are any uh, particular questions that uh, you may have uh, on this um, uh, grant uh, or these grants or process. Um, uh, that, that's 
kind of the, the intent of, of, of the briefing is, is to try to at least, uh, you know, be helpful in informing you about the process. Uh, so we're here for you, uh, uh, again, to be a, a support mechanism. Um, uh, and I'm, we're going to wait for a, a few minutes to see if there's any uh, particular uh, questions that, have, uh, that are coming in. And, and Sharon, if you can kind of run us through the questions, uh, if they come yeah. in, that will be great. Thomas, there are quite a lot of questions here. So I'm going to start with Alison here. She's asking, is the applicant responsible for identifying any technology vendors? Um, so Alison, the, 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 the applicant is not uh, required to identify um, the technology bits. I mean, we don't, we, there's like a handful of institutions that we've seen that, you know, I may say numpy and they're like, nope, numpy. Uh, you know, so, so we don't expect the applicants to, to be deep, you know, machine learning or, or data science people, right? Um, generally speaking, you know, some of the areas that are tricky, so I, I want to explain it this way. Um, I've shared with you that we're rolling, uh, uh, you know, RASA, Google, uh, and, and Amazon, period, right, as, as sort of the technology uh, triumvirate behind the scenes. Um, generally speaking, where the technology configuration is tricky is when we go to deploy this stuff into your context, you know, some people have a kind of chat running like live chat. So the discussion of is this going to fit into live chat, um, how is that going to work? These are items that tend to require discussion about, okay, we're going to put this into voice, so are we good with rolling it out of Siri? and out of um, Alexa, or does it need to be launched from an existing mobile application that already exists, and how is that going to work? The other issues that are important are, okay, well, we're not going to provide this to prospects, we're going to provide to students, and we're only going to provide it to students who log in. So how is that login going to work? So these are items that we, we tend to want to clarify in a follow-up uh, call, but are hard to capture in a in a, in a grant application uh, because they're, they're tricky uh, in terms of, um, you know, things that maybe you haven't even thought through yet in terms of what a, what a uh, strategy might look like or what a phase one, phase two look like. So, so generally, no, we don't require all this stuff figured out, um, although it does impact what we're going to do on, on execution and scope and, of course, cost. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, we, we, we'd like some uh, sense of, hey, if we do make a selection uh, or shortlist of your institution, hey, we probably want to roll this out in, in this way first, um, you know, would be helpful to understand purely from a optics and functional standpoint, uh, and not from a technical standpoint. We'll figure out when you say, hey, this is going to go to students uh, and it's going to give, you know, the real student financial aid numbers and status, well, that can't be uh, you know, given to a prospect, it has to be authenticated due to FERPA, uh, and, and the authentication is going to run off of your CAS or SHIB or ADFS or Active Directory. Like those are things that you know, uh, uh, you know, we, we understand in the weeds in terms of how to pull something like that off. Um, so, so that's the summary uh, in terms of we don't expect that context in the application, uh, but where and you know the persona, the student versus prospect, for example, uh, and, and the ideal you know, phase one of the, the best channel, you know, that you want to roll with or, or whatever, you know, those are things you, you may want to be uh, ready with. And if you do have them in the application, that helps, right? It doesn't hurt, uh, you know, for us to kind of be able to look at that because uh, we're going to wind up asking things like that uh, in, in more simple ways, uh, uh, you know, in a follow-up uh, call. So, um, so, so that's what the summary. Sharon, can you go to the next question? I hope that answers the question. If there's a follow-up, please uh, push it. Uh, up into the into the uh, chat. Uh, I'll move to the next question. In the meanwhile, uh, if we are already if we already have a successful campus text bus implementation, would a recommendation from that vendor be acceptable? So I I think it's pretty similar to the first one. Um, if there is an existing um, so, so I'm, I'm going to generally say if you have something that's already been implemented, this is not really the grant for you, right? Uh, meaning you, you've already got a project running uh, and, are, and, are, and are in the end zone. This, the grant would be more for institutions 
who don't have uh, an AI game or want to change their AI game uh, in terms of uh, a, a transition from an existing, let's say, pilot uh, to to a to a to a you know more broad stream uh, uh, de production deployment, right? So if you've already implemented, let's say, for example, you've rolled something on your own and it's in production, and you're looking to offset your costs that you've already put into the project, not the right uh, you know target uh, for the grant. Um, and, and then again, you know, we are not going to hitch our, uh, wagon with, uh, you know, organizations that are, uh, still early. We're not assessing technology generally. We're assessing technology and, uh, viability. So we get into things like auditing financial statements, auditing cash flow, auditing, uh, sustainability, because when we make, uh, commitments to institutions over a five year period, we need to make sure that the vendors are going to, you know, be around. Uh, you know, from an execution standpoint. So uh, generally, if you've got some shop that uh, uh, is early stage, we'd be happy to look at them. Uh, but if they're, you know, kind of a startup, uh, you know, we, we'd like to see, you know, some some uh, some years or, or feet or legs uh, before we start making recommendations. Because when we make a recommendation, a lot of institutions trust us that we've done the work uh, and diligence, um, you know, up front, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's complex stuff uh, in terms of auditing the tech and the business uh, elements together. Um, Sharon, maybe next question. We have Nikki who asked, what is the cost of future years beyond five years? So typically the way that it would work is um, if we decide to do a, a full grant um, in terms of just uh, cover the entire uh, uh, scope and cost, you would basically have a, uh, as an example, let's just say a three-year uh, grant award um, uh, or a five-year grant award or whatever the term may be. And if that award was, let's say, $35,000 uh, over, over the life or $50,000 over the life of the three years or something of that sort, we would build into the program the ability for that to renew, uh, meaning a second phase of the grant uh, at the same terms as the first phase. So on a full grant, uh, it, the, the first year terms would roll over to the second uh, terms, the second, second set of uh, uh, terms uh, in terms of three plus three, five plus five, three plus three plus three. If you have a partial, let's say for example, um, uh, you, you know, you, you have a, uh, a $10,000 uh, uh, you know, uh, um, matching uh, a, a grant uh, uh, fee, your uh, same structure would roll over, let's say again, uh, to years uh, uh, three, four, uh, four, five, and six, or years six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, you know, depending on the, the term structure. We, we tend to do things in three or five year structures uh, generally, so we tend not to do one year uh, structures in higher ed. Uh, but that, that's, you know, generally it should give you a sense that, uh, you know, anything we, we put together, um, uh, you know, tends to have uh, the same terms just renew and extend. Um, so, so the grants are really important to us, uh, obviously, from that perspective. And that's why the, the vendor longevity is key, because we're talking about, you know, six years, 10 year type programs, um, you know, that, uh, that need to be, you know, funded and sustained. Um, so, so hopefully that helps. Uh, Sharon, we can go to the next question. So the next question is, how can we learn if we have the hardware required to launch the chatbot? If upgrades are required, will the grant pay for them? Yes. So um, what's important, by the way, I forgot to mention that um, the, the, ch the chat voice bits, the voice bits are also available uh, from our perspective. When I said omni-channel, you know, like the stuff you see on Amazon, and in the various retail stores like the Alexa device, the Google, you know, devices, um, which are, which we can also call kiosks. So all of these channels are, are just on, you know, when I mentioned omni channels, different interface points. So th there, there's no real hardware, right? Because you're not really running any hardware, um, you know, in, in the campus, unless you do these kiosks. We've seen some campuses pilot some kiosks where you know, students can come in and talk to an, an Alexa or Google Assistant device, um, you know, Echo or whatever, and get their questions answered, which is kind of cool. Um, uh, but but the hardware context is 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 not required. The 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 context that is relevant is 
when we connect to the campus, um, you know, depending on if it's authenticated or it's public, you know, then there's going to be, um, uh, you know, stuff we need to configure, but not stuff you need to buy, like hardware or software you need to purchase. So, uh, but the reason why I say that is still somebody in your team needs to spend some time and time is money, right? Meaning time is still involved and, and, and it takes that person away from doing something else. So you, you need to just plan for that configuration stuff, but you don't need to buy any software or hardware um, or, or prerequisite stuff on the campus. Um, the, the second part of that, um, uh, uh, Sharon, can you remind me what the second part of that was? Sure. Uh, if upgrades are required, will the grant be? Oh, yeah, yeah, of, of course. So, so this thing revs fast, right? Because things are up, being upgraded and need to be upgraded to maintain, um, you know, the, 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 the quality uh, of the experience. And, and Amazon and Google, and, and, you know, continue to add stuff all the time. So it, it's important to, uh, to, to, like I said earlier, it's support and maintenance, right? And support is one thing. But the key word to answer your question is maintenance. Maintenance means product updates, upgrades, releases. Because if you get if you fall asleep at the wheel on on AI, you're going to have stuff that looks like you know old school. Um, so 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 that's the, uh, the the point. Hopefully that that, that it makes sense. On so the maintenance is included uh, in the program. Otherwise, it really wouldn't be sustainable and, and wouldn't be really uh, kind of a, a grant we would get behind. Uh, Sharon, uh, 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 other questions? There's just one last question uh, by Michelle. She asks, we are already working with an automated chat technology and have a queuing software. However, they are not integrated. How would this technology work with our existing technology or replace our existing technology product? Right. So, look. I mean, that's exactly what you know. We, 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 that's exactly what I'm referring to. So, there's a lot of stuff here. Like everybody who wants to be cool, like in the last year, is just like, oh, I got some AI thing. Or here, let me throw together some two people, and I've got an AI company because I know how to spell, you know, national natural language processing or machine learning. Right. So that's not the game here. Um, you know, higher ed is in one place, and AI is in a different place. And again, like I said last year, a few campuses have deployed or tested stuff, um, and it doesn't have to be like just the biggest research universities. But you know, it, it, it's not a new thing uh, like it was a year ago or two years ago. So uh, the, the issue. Let, let's take a really practical example. If any of you are technical on the call, you know, we have a help desk, right? It's called the IT help desk, and the IT help desk takes phone calls for the most part, right? Mostly people are calling into the IT help desk and they're calling like a Cisco call manager, right? Through a telephone system uh, environment. So how is a, how is a chat, how is a, uh, a, a chat a voice bot gonna work in that, in, that, in that phone call, right? Like if the voice bot can't work w within or in front of that experience, it's not really awesome. It, it's just sort of sitting in another like silo that has to be managed and maintained, it, it, you know, the, the beautiful piece would be if that, if that phone call coming in to the IT help desk, uh, you know, was able to be tied together with the, the, the voice bot, and then if it weren't able to handle stuff, it, it would still route to the IT technicians that were using the Cisco call manager the way they currently get calls. Like, it would be awesome. And furthermore, it would be really awesome if the chat bot voice bot could reset your password uh, because most of the issues coming into an IT help desk are password or access related. So similarly, um, it, you know, it, this applies to the chat space. You may, may or may not frankly have any chat or interest in chat because maybe nobody's using chat right now. So rolling out chat might be kind of like cool that you have it, but it's like not really the mainstream of communication. So it's sort of weird. Uh, you know, kind of sticking out there and you're kind of pushing people to a, to a chat, which may be good or not good, or depending on where the ch chat is or how it looks. And then some of you might have a chat client that's different from a Cisco phone. And that chat client is, let's say, you know, Baumgar or it's live chat or some software, um, you know, that, that again, you don't want to run two chat clients um, and, 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 and try to figure out how to, you know, m maintain, uh, you know, three windows like four windows 
on your on your on your um, you know uh, on your financial aid administrator or your admissions. You know, the, this is not IT, right? They're not the, they're not going to m- maybe be able to handle you know two chat windows, two phone windows, and still do their day job. Um, so this 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 whole syncing and integrating with the current stream of work and, and and doing it incrementally is really where I feel like the magic is. Um, uh, 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 otherwise, it's kind of like the cool to have, but doesn't really, you know, work. Um, you know, that, that's kind of the, the, the uh, little bit of the story. And then the last piece is really important. So some people have some, you know, what are, what are essentially what I see in the market uh, in, in the first year or two are really FAQ bots, things that like kind of do FAQ stuff, um, you know, in some sense. But, you know, how do you deal with the issues coming in from an authenticated student that you know are coming in through your portal, your school's portal, or your school's mobile app, because that's where they're coming in from. Um, tying that in uh, intelligently uh, to identity and tying it into their, um, you know, their student portal, their student information system, self-service interface, or their mobile application. You know, these are the things where the rubber hits the road, and it's not just <clears throat> hey, we we threw some chatbot uh, out there for uh, enrollment. Uh, generally speaking, you know, right? Okay, well, like check the box. We have AI. So these are the things that uh, I don't think I, I want to say. Hey, we solved all the problems in every context, but these are the things that we thought were really important to <clears throat> consider for AI to work at scale uh, and really decrease <clears throat> the the interactions. So the approach that we we've taken is look at the way that things are happening in the day to day and work backwards, simply work backwards to decrease uh, the, the interactions where it's possible to do it uh, and, and tie those into the current workflows. Because it, it's not like we can say, hey, let's implement AI, let's, let's, let's do away with your phone system. Uh, and, and, you know, let's, let's just, let's just you, know, uh, you know, get rid of all the phones and the entire you know, Nortel or entire Cisco phone system that you're using on, on a day-to-day basis, or have you run two phone systems, for example. So these are things that matter. Um, so our, the grant would essentially, um, you know, that's, that's why I said earlier, we, we, we need to understand the, the, the preferred or, you know, phase one, phase two uh, user experience, <clears throat> uh, experience. Um, you know, hey, we, 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 we have something, we did it, it's sort of just sitting out there, uh, you know, but really now we're, we're thinking about how this ties into, uh, you know, a single chat experience. It's both AI and human. Um, and, and we're thinking about maybe phase two, how, you know, this can tie into our normal phones. Uh, so we're not running like a separate voice client, um, you know, uh, and the, the other things like a kiosk and, you know, are, are nice bells and whistles. <clears throat> but, but the challenge always is how do you fall back to real people? Um, you know, the workflow for that should be really, really great. Otherwise, you're going to lose the, the student on the experience between, you know, getting help uh, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know not, not being able to follow through on the, on the chat or the, the, the phone call uh, because now you're switching systems and you're like, yeah, we don't know. We can't help you there, uh, but our, our bot can't answer that question. Good luck. So, uh, that you, I go back to that user experience and how to best phase it in. Uh, and phasing it in is just about risk mitigation. You know, uh, you, you don't want to jump in with three feet uh, and then have to pull back, uh, you know, because it wasn't phased in uh, uh, effectively, right? So these are the areas that, that um, you know, we can review. And, and if the grant can add value to, to moving the needle in your context, then it doesn't make sense. If it can, then it makes sense, right? Because you have experience. Uh, on, on what's working and not working, or you have trained data sets, and that may mean the project is much more, it's much more easy for us to succeed because we can use the data sets that you've already spent time preparing, preparing to train, uh, which makes your project less risky uh, to some extent. So you would be a good candidate for the grant uh, in, in, insofar as the project would probably go a lot more smoothly than you know an, an institution that had to build the uh, entire knowledge from the ground up, but again, institutions have to build the knowledge from the ground up. You know, they they have more of a need. So, you know, that's hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, uh, context. And if, again, if you have follow-ups that are more technical or specific, that's where you know you can coordinate with Sharon uh, and 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 the the the, the coordination team, uh, so that as you go through the application, or even if you have these more specific, hey, we use this thing, we use that thing. You know, we're thinking this. You know, we'd be happy to jump on that. You know, help us too. 
uh, to get a better sense of your your context and the work effort. Um, uh, you know, if that helps. So, uh, Sharon, I think we're 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 also getting uh, to the top of almost the top of the hour. Um, and I think you said that was one of the last questions that that you had. Uh, if there are other questions that are more specific or contextual, uh, like the ones that have been coming up, uh, again, please don't you know wait for the grant committee to come back at you with questions on your application. Uh, you know, please coordinate with our team uh, because those can be helpful to us better understanding you and the application uh, in advance. Uh, we're gonna uh, pause uh, here. Uh, it looks like everybody uh, is, is still uh, in the mix. Um, uh, we're gonna, you know, just thank you for taking uh, the time. We appreciate uh, the interest. Uh, this is a hot, really hot topic, uh, and very, I think, useful uh, to to our, our 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 members and our institutions. Uh, and it aligns very much to our mission of of you know uh, you know of of re reducing the cost of higher ed. Uh, or education or, or, you know, doing more with less or, or not reinventing the wheel um, uh, because of the automation uh, that, uh, you know, that AI can, can bring. And, and lastly, don't, don't feel like AI is like a problem, like you're going to, you know, like, uh, you know, eliminate uh, uh, staff in, in some sort of, you know, uh, union staff. It, what I've seen is it just frees people up not to do the same repetitive tasks and allows them to do tasks that are more valuable and where their experience of many years can be more effective uh, because they're more complex or tricky uh, in, in nature. Uh, so, so, you know, I, I think AI is, from, from our positioning, what we feel, it, it's a really great area to, to automate the, the remedial tier one repetitive stuff that the team is wasting time on, uh, frankly, and, 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 and be able to triage and spend time uh, at, the, at the, you know, kind of uh, 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 other end of the funnel, uh, uh, you know, or, or, or the, uh, you know, uh, just more, more, more effectively uh, with uh, the prospects um, on things that matter, um, and of course with students on, on financial aid. Uh, so again, we're not saying hey, AI and self services, you know, we want to lose the connection with humans and reality. Um, it, you know, it's important to really balance uh, these items uh, between self service AI, meaning knowledge base AI and use the technology, you know, where, where it really makes sense uh, thoughtfully. So we appreciate everybody's time. Uh, this is the Campus Consortium uh, out of Chicago. We're going to drop off now and get back to, to the winter freeze. Thank you, everyone.